I want to talk about the power and purpose of praise and worship. Say that, the power and purpose of praise and worship. Look at the person on the side of you. Tell them that. Wake somebody up. I want them to hear this very quickly. We're going to talk about the power and purpose of praise and worship. This is, this is an important topic. It is an important thing to talk about because God gives us weapons to engage in battle with the enemy. He gives us weapons, and one of those weapons is praise and worship. And I, I want to talk about it because there's a few people who don't think that they ought to praise and worship God. Um, not you, but the person sitting next to you is who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the person sitting around you who, who are stoic and unmovable and and never says amen, never raises their hand, never says thank you, never gives God any praise or glory, even though God has been awfully good to them. Amen. See, they didn't even clap right there when it was a good place, good time to clap. They didn't even clap. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who don't think it takes all of that. But the reality is, when you really look back over your life, God has done enough for everybody in here for us to worship Him. So let me take a few moments. This is a Bible study. I'm going to be looking at a lot of verses, a few verses. This is a Bible study. And I bring Bible study to you because... Look at your neighbor and say, ask your neighbor, when the last time you've been to Bible study on a Tuesday or Wednesday? Wait for an answer. Ask him, when the last time you, here's a better question. Have you ever been to Bible study on a Tuesday or Wednesday? So, since you don't come, pastor has to bring it to you. I want to talk about it, because this is an important component of our walk as Christians. It's very important for you to understand it, for you to practice it in your life. And the Bible gives us clarity about it. So let me begin by just defining two things. Let me define praise and let me define worship. Praise, according to the Bible and the definitions of uh, the words in the Bible, praise is an act of, wor of worship or acknowledgement by acknowledging the virtues or deeds of another person or entity. Praise is giving glory and honor to God. It is, it is, here's what praise is. Praise is when we talk about God. Somebody say, about God. When you say that God has worked a miracle for you, that's praise. When you testify to somebody or you make a celebration of the victories he's wrought in your life or when you make a, a, a shout uh, of, of joy about the door he's opened. When you're saying something about God, that's praise. Worship is when you go from talking about God to talking to God. Worship is when you begin to give him praise and tell him how thankful you are for the doors that he's opened and for the miracles he's wrought. When you are giving him a celebration and thanks and celebrating what he has done, but you're giving it directly to him. Somebody say to him. That's worship. You know, some people think that the praise and worship that goes on in our church is optional. It's not an option. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of fact, we're going to read in just a few moments from the scriptures. It's not the preliminary. Somebody say, it's not the preliminary. <laughs> Praise and worship is, is giving. Just, it, it, matter of fact, I'm looking forward to the day when we come to church and people are already fired up worshiping and praising God. Hold up, wait, wait till I finish and shout, okay? They're worshiping and praising God as they drive up into the parking lot. So there won't be any arguments out in the parking lot and fights over spaces in the parking lot. I'm looking forward to the fact that while you're standing in line waiting for the traffic to die down, instead of you moping and complaining about how long it takes to get in, you can say, Lord, I can't wait to get up among the saints and give you the glory and the honor and the praise. It's, I'm looking forward to the day. Go on and preach, Pastor. I'm looking forward to the day that when you leave here, you won't have to leave early before the benediction because you can't get enough of the opportunity to worship him and 
You'll wait to receive the blessing before you leave because you're not trying to rush out of here. You're going to be standing in the line anyway. And so while you're sitting in line, you're giving God praise. Lord, thank you for that word. Thank you for the celebration with the saints. I'm looking forward to that day. I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime, but I'm looking forward to that day. And so, and so, and so, I thought I would give you three points, three things about praise and worship. I'm going to give you three, three things about what the purpose and, and power of it is. And, 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 and one of the points has sub-points, but I'll give that to you when I get to it. Let me start off with number one is praise. Here's the first point I want to tell you. Praise is a sacrifice. Somebody say a sacrifice. Say it again, sacrifice. One last time, say, so everybody say sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Psalm 50, 54, 54. I know that's not good English, but that's great preaching. In verse 6, Psalm 54 and 6 says, I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. I will freely, somebody say freely. God wants us to freely sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that he wants us to give to him freely. It's a, it's a sacrifice. It's something that, 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 that you're giving up to him, and he wants you to do it freely, willingly, not because somebody begs you. I look forward to the day that we, nobody has to ask you to give God praise. You do it freely and on your own. You give him the sacrifice without him having to ask you. I, if, if somebody introduces me pastor jenkins here's our pastor please let's welcome my pastor and half of y'all clap your hands praise the lord pastor praise the lord pastor and then the, the the person says come on y'all we can do better than that for our pastor then everybody claps uh keep keep it to yourself it, it, i wouldn't get i wouldn't get any joy i wouldn't feel any fulfillment out of that it wouldn't it wouldn't really encourage me if somebody you did it out of response to somebody else asking you to do it but it is those people who do it initially and firstly and of their own initiative as an act of gratitude that it has meaning and, and substance to me. And I feel that's the way God feels. If you're the only reason you're giving him praise and worship is because somebody asked you to do it and told, said you can do better than that. Come on, y'all. If, if that has to, if you need a cheerleader, keep it to yourself. But I'm looking forward to the day. I'm trying to preach to people so that we do this freely and willingly and sacrificially when we think about what God has done for us and where he's brought us from and the prayers he's answered and the miracles he's wrought that we give it to him freely because we want to give it to him. Can I get an amen from anybody? Uh, that's what he's looking for. That is a sacrifice that you offer to him cost you something if I was to reach in my wallet and break open my wallet and open it up and reach out and pull the first dollar that comes out BAM there it is a hundred dollar bill and then I decided that I wanted to sacrifice and give it to brother Sims and I was to give it to him he look at look at would there be a smile He's going to give it to somebody else, so I'm not going to give it to you. So I want to give it to you. Would you be grateful and excited? Look at the smile. You going to put it on the altar too? Who wants a hundred dollars? Who? None of these jacked up jokers acting like they know the Lord. And thank you, Minister Gail. She'll take it. Say, hold, hold, wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to make a point. Hold on. Let me finish making my point. The, okay, so if I wanted to willingly give it to you, you would receive it. You would accept it. But if I didn't want to willingly give it to you, if you had to take it from me, you wouldn't really want it if you had to take it from me and grab it and wrestle me down to the floor for it. But if I willingly gave it to you, you would be excited about it. But because I'm not willing to give it to you, I'm putting it right back in my pocket. I'm trying to make a point. Somebody say, I'm trying to make a point. God wants you to willingly give it to him. He wants you to willingly open your mouth and willingly give him a celebration. Not because you've been asked. Not because he had to wrestle it from you, beat you down, grab your wallet, take it out. But because you wanted to give it to him. I know it's not right, Minister Gail but it made my point, it made the illustration. 
Thank you. You gonna take care of her? Praise the Lord. These all spiritual jokers up here talking about they gonna put it on the altar. Do you get the point that I'm trying to make? God wants us to willingly make that sacrifice. I know it's not in your nature. I know you're normally calm and quiet and, and all of that, but sometimes you got to make a sacrifice and do something outside of your normal self. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. Tell them it's a weapon. Some of y'all are not willing. You're not able to win because you're not willing to give a sacrifice to God. The devil is beating you up and frustrating you because you're not willing to give a sacrifice. So, so the scripture tells us that praise is a sacrifice that he wants us to willingly give to him. Here's number two. Here's number two. Praise is for God's pleasure. Look at your neighbor and say, it's for God's pleasure. And I want to read Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. So Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Please uh, say amen when you get there. Revelation chapter 4 and verse, verse 11. I'm going to read it from the New King James, but then I want to read it from the uh, uh, King James because it really has the connotation of what I, 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 I want to say, and I wanna, want you to get this, this part of it. Uh, uh, verse 11 of Revelation 4 says, um, uh, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Y'all see that? Let me read it from the, from the King James. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, so in other words, God wants us to give us praise. He wants us to give him praise, and we need to know that it is for his pleasure. It's not for your pleasure. It's not for you. We're not asking you to do this because this makes you feel good. God's not asking you to do this because you like it. When I first became the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Granada 25 years ago, we, we, did, we, did, we, we started doing some things a little bit different. We took some bold steps. One of the first things we did was we put some drums in the church. Drums, drums. We bought some drums, put some drums in the church. They had never had drums before at the church. We put some drums in the church, and some of the people had problems with the drums. They were complaining. The drums, they didn't like the drums. The drums are too loud. They didn't like the drums. And I had to do a teaching on Sunday to tell them, yes, we have these drums in here because Psalm 150 says that we ought to make a praise him with the loud cymbals and with the high-sounding cymbals. We have put these drums here because it's one of the ways that God tells us that we ought to worship him. I had to tell him that, but I also had to tell them we did not put the drums in here for your pleasure. Come on, look at that. This is not for you. We, we're not worshiping you. We, we, you. You ain't never saved nobody. You ain't delivered nobody. You didn't wake nobody up in the morning. You didn't heal nobody. This ain't for you. It's for him. We're not singing songs that you like. We're celebrating to the God who opens up the doors for us. Can I get an amen from anybody? Yeah, we, we, we got to surrender. Get out of our pity party. Stop thinking that it's all about us and recognize that our praise and worship is for the pleasure of Almighty God. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for the praise and worship team. You're not doing it for the choir. You're not do, you don't celebrate. You don't clap. You don't raise your hands. You don't open your mouth and give praise so that, so that people get pleasure. This is for the pleasure of Almighty God. Thank all 17 of y'all for affirming that. That's, and that's fine. I, I, that's fine. Here's, here's point three. Did y'all get the first point? It's a sacrifice. Point two is for God's pleasure. Point three, praise God because. Somebody say because. Then I got four sub points to this. Praise God because number one, look at Psalm 18 verse 3. Psalm 18 verse 3. Here's what it says. 18.3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Somebody say, number one, we praise him because he is worthy. Is there anybody here who knows that God is worthy of praise and adoration? He's worthy. He deserves it. He deserves it. He's worthy. 
he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy in light of all that he has done, in light of the things he's done on our behalf. He's worthy of our praise. He, he deserves it. It's, it belongs to him. Amen. Whatever has accomplished or happened in your life, whatever you've achieved, whatever you've gone, whatever you've done, whatever you've been able to accomplish in life, you, you got it because God made it possible for you. He's worthy for you to give him praise. We praise God not only because he's worthy, but number two, number two, look at Psalm 22. Psalm 22 in verse number three. It says this, but you are holy enthroned in the praises of Israel. Oh, I like that right there. Enthroned, living in the praises of Israel. Israel Hill symbolizes the people of God, the chosen people of God. Here's my second point, that God inhabits, lives in the praises of his people. I need you to get that, that God lives in, in when his people praise him, he abides there. He lives there. He loves that. That's why you ought to wake up in the morning with a praise on your lips and a worship on your heart. You ought to wake up saying, God, I thank you that you kept me all night long. I laid there in the very image of death, but you woke me up this morning. You ought to give him praise. You ought to get in your car and drive to work praising the Lord and say, God, I I give you glory and honor. Why? Because he lives in praise. He operates in praise. He works miracles in the midst of praise. He does fabulous things in praise. He loves praise. He wants you to praise him. And guess what? Some of you are never able to get the accomplishments in life that you want because you haven't learned to praise him. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you know he's worthy of your praise. He lives in your praise. Give him the glory. Matter of fact, not only does he live in the praise of you individually, there's something spectacular when we all get together and worship him. When, when we can get two or three gathered together in his name. When we can get two or three people on the same accord. When we can sing the same song, be in the same heart, have the same mind, open our mouth and give him glory. He loves that. He loves it. 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 He lives in it. He celebrates it. He, matter of fact, we can go through the Bible and see time after time after time when people got into the worship of God collaboratively, collectively. I mean, when strings of people got together, walls came tumbling down. When the walls of Jericho came down, when the people of Israel walked around Jericho and they shouted a shout together, the walls came down. They were worshiping God and God inhabited that praise. When the people of God got together, when the temple got dedicated and they were all on one accord and they all worship God the glory of God was so awesome that it filled the temple that the priest didn't even get the opportunity to preach a word you know it's a fabulous thing when God can move and nobody's even said anything it, it happens when people get together on one accord wish I could get these young adults behind me to say amen a couple of times but you understand what I'm saying he inhabits he lives in the praises of his people. He, he inhabits. Somebody tell your neighbor, he lives in our praise. Uh, uh, let's go back to Psalm 150. I got the third thing. I'm almost finished. Somebody say, you're doing good, Pastor. You're doing good. Here's verse number two of Psalm 150. I could just really go through the whole 150 of Psalm, but I just picked out verse two. It says, uh, here's the third reason. It says, praise him for his mighty acts. Somebody say, for his mighty acts. Y'all don't got it yet. You got to have an attitude. Say, for his mighty acts. Yeah, I, I don't know your testimony. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've done. But here's what I do know. I know that everybody in here has had God do something mighty on their behalf. Everybody in here has had some need that a human could not fix or repair. Everybody in here done seen something that you look back at and you say, I know God did that. That could have only happened because God did it all. Do I have any witnesses in here today who can look back over your life and say, I know that that happened. Only God could have made that happen. 
Only God could have healed you of your disease. Only God could have repaired your broken marriage. Only God could have given you the job that you got that you're not qualified for. Only God could have opened the door that got open. Only God. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, only God, only God. High five them on the other side say, it was God. It was God. It was Jesus who did it. Bless his name. Bless the wonderful name. I'm not ashamed to worship him. I'm not ashamed to praise him. I'm not ashamed to give him thanks. He did a mighty act. A mighty act, a mighty act, a mighty act. I should be dead in my grave. I should have been shot when the gun was pointed at me. I should have died from AIDS. I should have had gonorrhea. I should have lost my job. I should have lost my mind. I should have gone crazy. But he kept me sane. He let me live. He spared my life. He's worthy of praise for his mighty act. Here's my final point. It is 11 o'clock. I got to finish this thing. Can I read 1 Peter 2, 9? Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Y'all make me feel like I'm preaching when, when you're staying. I want to read 1 Peter 2, 9, then I'll be finished. Here's the last. Did y'all get the first sub-reason? We praise him. Why? Because he's worthy. Number two, he inhabits the praises of his people. Number three, and here's number four, sub point four. We praise God because, verse, uh, First Peter two verse nine. Can I read First Peter two verse nine? Y'all help me give God a shout up in here. Anybody here grateful that you ain't in darkness anymore? Anybody here glad that he brought you into his marvelous light? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from waters he lifted me now safe am I he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light he saved me redeemed me he died for me was buried for me early Sunday morning he got up out of the grave for me I praise God he gave me life Who am I preaching to today? Who's with me on this thing? Do I have any witnesses here today who don't mind giving God the praise that he brought you into his marvelous light? I'm so glad I'm in the light. I'm so glad I'm out of darkness. I'm so glad he saved me, washed me, cleansed me, delivered me, healed me, fixed me, mended me, molded me, changed me. He brought me out of darkness. Woo. Hey, I feel a shout down in my soul. He saved me. Hey! Hey! Y'all excuse me. Hey! I'm giving him praise. Hey! I'm giving him worship. Yes! Woo! Hey! Glory, glory, glory. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. He's worthy to be praised. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. When I look back over my life and everything, everything he brought me out of. <laughs> Whoa, when I think about the goodness of Jesus. When I think about where he brought me from. When 
when I think about how he changed me, you ain't got to beg me. Nobody got to ask me. Nobody got to pump me up. Nobody got to say, come on, raise your hand. Come on, come on. No, 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 I don't need all of that. Hold up. You know what I discovered? I'm praising him not only for what he has done, I'm praising for what he is doing. Somebody better recognize there's some angels on their way to see about you. There's deliverance on his way to deliver you. It might not have arrived yet, but it's somewhere in the vicinity. It's nearby. Somebody say it's nearby. Somebody, I can smell it. I can smell it in the atmosphere. I, I feel it. I feel it in the, in the arena. I feel, I, I feel it coming down. It's about to, uh, it's about to break forth in your life. And listen, I'm the kind of person, I don't have to wait till I see it. I can thank him because I know he's already sent it all the way. Glory to God. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Y'all, excuse me. I'm trying to let it go. I'm trying to get done. I'm trying to be finished. I'm trying to bring it to a close. But I keep on thinking about why I got to praise him and why I want to worship him. I keep thinking about it. I'm not only praising him for what he's done, what he's doing, his credit is so good, I'm praising him for what he gonna do. I might not get it for five years, but God, I thank you for it ahead of time. It might not come to next week, but I thank you for it ahead of time. I praise you for what you gonna do. The job you're gonna provide, the doors you're gonna open, the marriage you're gonna heal, the bills you're gonna pay. Ah! Woo! Hey, y'all, excuse me, we're going into overtime now. Thank the Lord, I'm praising Him. If He never does another thing for me, I thank Him that He died for me was buried for me and early Sunday he got up for me Woo. somebody shake somebody's hand thank God for what he's going to do shake their hand say thank him thank him thank him thank him bless his name thank him thank him thank him bless him worship him praise him he's worthy he's a great god he's a miracle working god he's a mighty acts doing god he's a heart regulating god hallelujah oh my gosh i'm way over time i'm sorry let me stop Dr. Barnes, I'm sorry. I'm, I should have been a, more, a little more sophisticated that you was here. I should have been a little more calmer, but let me tell you something. I, and I know you're not accustomed to this, but there ain't nothing like the praise that goes on in a black church. Woo! When we think about where God brought us from.
This ain't nothing but a Holy Ghost party and the Holy Ghost party can't stop. All right. Praise the Lord. Bless his name. I worship him. I praise him. All right, listen. We're praising him because he brought us out of darkness. By the blood of Jesus and his death on the cross, his resurrection, he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He forgave us of our sins. He washed our sins away. Today's dynamic message from Pastor Jenkins is one that has the power to change your life, but it can only do so if you have a heart and soul that belong to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to be able to make such a claim, but you don't know how. It's simple. You just have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again with all power. Your sins are now forgiven, and you're part of the family of God. Welcome. Maybe you're already saved and in need of a church home, one that will nurture your growth and development as a Christian. Or perhaps you were once in fellowship with God, but have since drifted away and are ready to return to your first love. Whatever the case, we'd love to have you become a part of the First Baptist family. Simply contact us at 301-773-3600 or visit our website at www.fbcglenarden.org for more information on any one of our four convenient services or our 100 plus ministries designed to meet your most intimate needs. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where God is developing dynamic disciples.